Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! So the leader of resurgent Scottish Conservatives, Ruth Davidson, has said she won't be breaking away from the main UK party. There were suggestions that the Scottish Tories, who won an additional 12 seats and fought their campaign with a rather different tone, might want to move their branch of the party away from English control. Kieran Jenkins joins me now from Stirling. Kieran. Yes, Jackie. Well, I'm here because Ruth Davidson has been here. Now, since this election, one of the most powerful Conservative figures in the UK. She ran a very different campaign to the one that arguably crashed in England, a very Scottish campaign, and she was rewarded for it. The SNP won, of course, but her Conservatives in Scotland went from 1 to 13 seats. And Theresa May probably knows that she wouldn't be in Downing Street without Ruth Davidson. And so that group of Scottish Tory MPs is now incredibly important. And they, arguably, there are whispers here, they answer not to Theresa May, but to Ruth Davidson. So there couldn't be a worse party for Theresa May to be reaching out to right now than the DUP, because Ruth Davidson is gay, she's about to get married, and the DUP, of course, opposed and blocked equal marriage in Northern Ireland. Now, Ruth Davidson went last year to Belfast Pride, and I went with her, and there she took the fight to the people that the Conservatives may soon be aligned with in government. As somebody who comes from a, a lot of different communities, you know, I'm a practicing Christian, I'm Protestant, I'm a unionist, so I think I'm both Scottish and British, that's how I identify. But I'm also engaged to a Catholic Irish woman who was educated by nuns. And this is one of those cases where you're not giving rights to some people and taking them away from someone else. This is about making sure that people have the same rights as everybody else. And I believe that uh, the act of homosexuality is diametrically opposed to the mind and to the plan of God. Now, I felt and I could sense today that Ruth Davidson is somebody that knows that she has leverage and intends to use it, particularly to soften Brexit. Have a look at this. Theresa May made this election about her mandate. She didn't get one. Why is she still Prime Minister? Well, the Prime Minister uh, is Theresa May. There is no vacancy. She has my full support. She won the election. We've got more seats than any other party. We don't have a majority, which means that we will have to speak to other parties and, and people uh, outside uh, the Commons of, about the way in which the country approaches Brexit. But I think that might be healthy. I want to make sure we pursue an open Brexit rather than a close one. Is Theresa May's negotiating position stronger or weaker after having had this election? Well, I think what's very clear is not winning a majority means that uh, we will work with other parties across the Parliament and parties outside uh, the Parliament. I think that's healthy as we move to a consensus of, of leaving uh, the European Union. Now, there's things that I want to see in the Brexit negotiations. I want to make sure it's open. I want to make sure there's more freedoms. I want to put trade at the heart of, of what it is as we go forward. And I want to make sure there's freedoms, for example, for Scotland's fishermen. We need to make sure that as we come out the CFP, uh, we take back control of our waters. But this was an election about strengthening her hand. Is she stronger or is she weaker? Simple choice. Well, look, I think it's clear that the Prime Minister won the election. She's going to work with other parties uh, across the Commons Chamber and she deserves the support of the country as she does but, but that. She is she stronger has my support. Or, or is she weaker? And if she is weaker, which we all know she is, why is she still the Prime Minister? Well, she's the Prime Minister because she won the election and that's kind of how it works. And she has my full support. You had a chat with her on Friday and you talked mm. about the DUP. What else did you talk about? Well, we talked about uh, a number of issues. Uh, we talked about the, the group of MPs that I'm sending down uh, to the House of Commons. Uh, I told her that they were some of my brightest and best and I asked her to look after them. You said also that there are issues that need to be addressed. Did you tell her about what those issues were that you feel need to be addressed? Well, I, I have regular conversations with the Prime Minister. Uh, I'm not going to go into every dot and comma with them with Channel 4 News. But, but tell, uh... tell us then, <laughs> tell, tell us, not what you told her, but what issues need to be addressed after this election? Well, look, I think it's really clear that we need to have a, a look again at the way in which we approach Brexit. We need to make sure that we have broad consensus across not just political parties, but amongst the country uh, as a whole. And that's what I'm going to endeavour to help the Prime Minister achieve. So a look again at Brexit, does that mean a different 
different Brexit to the Brexit that was in the Conservatives' manifesto? Well, I think what's clear is because there wasn't a majority government, uh, we have to work with other parties, and that means taking on some of their ideas as well, and I think that's a, a, a mature way to go forward. So a modified Brexit from the one in the Conservatives' manifesto? Well, it's certainly true that we're going to have to work with uh, other parties. There was lots of the things that were in the Conservative manifesto that other parties agreed with. Some people thought that there were differences that needed to be looked at. That's something that we need to reopen. Uh, I think that's a, a, a mature way to continue. So there will Are be changes. Just briefly, just on the DUP, mm -hmm. um, Theresa May yesterday described the DUP as her friends, the Conservative Party's friends. Are you prepared to use that word? Are they your friends? Well, look, I have friends in politics across many parties, but what I spoke to the Prime Minister about yesterday was the need for a categoric assurance uh, that uh, talking with the DUP would not result uh, in any rollback of LGBTI rights uh, in the rest of the UK, because as the Conservative Party, we are the Party of Equal Marriage, we introduced it to the House of Commons, and also that we would use our influence to try and advance LGBT rights but in Northern Ian Ireland. Paisley and Paisley said he was, re he was Ian, Ian Paisley, sorry, just this one. Sterling, well, well, the rest of that question was going to be about the views of certain DUP members who've said that they're repulsed by homosexuality, that it's an abomination, and are they the, really the sort of friends that you want in government? But in fairness to Ruth Davidson, it's been a long few days. There were other press there that she wanted to speak to, and this issue of all issues is particularly difficult for her. But something else significant happened in that interview. It felt like Ruth Davidson was firing the opening salvos in a Conservative civil war on Brexit. Remember yesterday, Theresa May said, let's get to work. Ruth Davidson today said we need to look again and have a, at the approach to Brexit and as far as I'm aware that's not Conservative Party policy. Thanks, Kieran. Kieran Jenkins in Stirling. There was some news just in. The former Tory MP Gavin Barwell, he was MP for Croydon Central until Thursday, has been appointed as the new Downing Street Chief of Staff. I've been getting away with it all.